Gemfan seems to be absolutely killing it with the props that they've been coming out with lately. It seems that every new prop that they come out with has something really impressive and notable about it, and this is no different. This is the 4023. It's a 4-inch tri-blade prop. There's also a twin blade version of it that's the 4024. Just like the 3016 versus the 3018, the twin blade version is a little bit steeper pitch, a little bit more aggressive, and the tri-blade version is a little bit shallower. While this particular prop looks like it might be a scaled up 3016, it's actually been totally re-engineered to be a four inch prop. It just looks very similar. And so the defining features of this prop are really its incredible response and its very controllable throttle, throttle range. And so four inch is a little bit of a troubled size and I'll get to that in a couple minutes, but let's first talk about this prop. This is a very lightweight, low load four inch prop. There actually are not a lot of four inch props to begin with. And there's only one other prop that I know of in this similar category as this prop. And that's the three plus year old now, HQ 4x4.3x3V1S. And that prop was fantastic three plus years ago. It's still fantastic now. It's a really great prop. It's, it's in my opinion, was the best prop before I tried this prop. And the real differences between this prop and the HQ prop is that the throttle control of this prop is just a lot easier because the HQ prop is a little bit more aggressive. It's also a little bit heavier, so the response is coupled with the, the weight, coupled with the steeper pitch of the HQ prop means the response is gonna be a little bit less, really not that much less, so you can't really tell the difference between the two. But the throttle control is really the significant difference between these two, where the HQ prop may feel very jumpy on a quad you put it on. This prop will not feel as jumpy. It's not going to be a whole lot slower. It will be a teensy bit slower, but it's not going to feel as jumpy, and it's going to make you make your ability to fly the quad so much easier. Now, what I've been flying it on, this is uh, a four inch prototype build, and uh, unfortunately that flight that I actually recorded was cut short because the antenna off my Caddx Vista unit ripped off. I didn't even crash. It just ripped off and then my video cut out and I fell out of the sky. I don't know why they're using a UFL when the larger uh, DJI unit uses MMCX. I have no idea why they didn't just switch to MMCX. Now I gotta find another antenna to plug into my UFL over there. So getting back to this prop. So it's a two point two gram, not even two point, it's a two gram zero, two point zero zero. I weighed eight of them and I divided by eight and it's two point zero zero grams. And that is really impressive. That's without this center hub insert. And so the center hub insert is another point that I do need to discuss because it may be an issue in the somewhat near future. So this is a uh, gem fans patented design to have this little insert to make their four inch or any prop really compatible with both a M5 mount as well as a T mount. And this is a 1.5 millimeter center hole and it does work great as a normal T mount with two screws on top as you would normally mount. However, in the near future, it will be important to note that this center piece, it does slide all the way through the prop. You can slide it out of both sides. And so you do need to use screws to hold the prop on at the edges. And again, this is not important right now, but it may be very important in the, in the near future. The 1.5 millimeter center hole just doesn't make any sense to me at all. I mean, no one's gonna be press fit. They might as well just have a big empty hole in the middle or have no hole in the middle and start making motors that don't have a shaft sticking up out of the motor itself because ain't nobody gonna be press fitting a four inch prop. Even to me, my intuition, it seems a little bit unreasonable to expect a four inch prop to stay on a motor when it's press fit on a two millimeter, even a three millimeter shaft. Sure, it might work, but it's not gonna be anywhere near as reliable as a three inch prop, which the diameter is a lot narrower and you're just not gonna be generating as much uh, torque forces, I guess you call them, on that shaft. So it actually works out really well to have a, a two millimeter press fit on a three inch prop, at least in the very light category. And the light category is definitely where this prop falls. Now, motor expectations and motor sizes that I'd recommend, I would recommend a um, 1407 probably minimum in probably 3500 kV is a really good number with 4S. I think that's a really perfect combination for this motor. If you move up to 3600 kV, that's great. 3800 kV, that's also great. 4000 or 4100 kV, that's also great. This quad that I'm running it on is actually 4300 kV and I'm running it on a 
1300 milliamp 4s battery that's not even a high-end battery it's actually a low-end gmb battery i've been using these batteries to see if it actually matters to use the really high-end batteries on quads that have a low power requirement and i'm really happy to report that this prop performs great <laughs> 4300 kv and 4s it's blisteringly fast I, I, way faster than i needed to go and i, I wouldn't run it on 4300 kv it's it, it performs great it doesn't seem to deflect even at 4300 kv on 4s with a 350 gram all up weight which is what i would consider near the upper limit of what you may want to run this prop at but it seems to perform fantastic i wouldn't say this prop is not good for higher load quads but it's a low load prop if you're running like a 550 600 plus gram prop uh, quad yeah, this prop is going to work out fine, but you may want a slightly more aggressive prop. Maybe the HQ 4x4.3x3 V1S, if you could find it anywhere. Uh, I might stock it in the store, just because it is still a great prop. It may be a better choice for you. But I would say this prop really shines at the weight level of around 250 grams all up weight, all the way up to about 400, 350, 400 grams all up weight. And that's a pretty wide window. As you go up in prop size, your, your all up weight window where it can still perform really great gets a lot wider. And so this is really a great prop for the four inch class. Now getting to the four inch class, and let's talk about that. So four inch has not been popular forever. And that's what I'm gonna guess for a couple of specific reasons. One of which being, it's not actually a whole lot smaller than five inch. And the other being, it's not actually really small. So if you want a small quad, three inch is kind of the upper limit of the micro-ish size where you kind of have a nice little tight package. If you want a cinematic quad or something that performs really top of its game or need, need something to really carry a GoPro well and quickly, well, five inch is gonna be the prop size for you and you really don't want a four inch now not to say you cannot build a four inch that is super aggressive with 2205 motors or maybe even bigger motors with a super ultra bull nose prop and a massive 1500 million battery for the prop size and the overall build and then put a gopro on there and have a 600 plus gram all up weight and it will perform fine sure it's going to be incredibly inefficient and the throttle control is going to feel like an on off switch but hey it will work and it will work totally fine definitely not something i would want to fly but if you just put five inch on that same quad, it's gonna perform a whole lot better and it's not gonna weigh any more and it's not gonna be much bigger. Now, if you look at the other end of the spectrum, you're not gonna use five inch electronics on a three inch quad. However, this is the kicker. So what's been happening over the past year or so, the micro electronics have gotten so much better that you can now run three inch high powered three inch, no problem. And they'll run four inch, no problem as well. You could even run light five inch. You can run heavy five inch on some of these electronics as well. It just won't give you the maximum performance. And so let's take a look at this board. This is the GEP RC uh, 20 amp toothpick board, 4S 20 amp. And this board is what I'm running in this quad. And it actually does 4S well. The 12 amp versions of these toothpick boards actually don't do 4S very well. I really recommend, strongly recommend you stay at 3S. And so what I mean by well is very important because it can, the 12 amp version can do 4S totally, you can probably even run 5S on it, but you're just not gonna be getting maximum performance. Very few people, unless you're really experienced, you haven't, you probably haven't noticed this, but if you run a somewhat low end ESC, and it doesn't necessarily mean it's gonna be cheap, just an ESC that doesn't quite perform up to its spec, and then you swap out those ESCs and put something that actually does perform really good, you feel kind of this, immediate snappiness in response of the quad and that's what i mean by well so if the ESC can't manage the quad very well you're going to have just this kind of soft response throttle response delayed response a little bit it's going to be a little bit harder to tune you're not going to be able to actually go quite as fast it's not going to be as efficient and so that's why I don't really recommend 4S on those 12 amp boards. However, this 20 amp board actually can do 4S very, very well. And, you, and that's enough. 4S 20 amp is enough to run even most five inch builds. So what's been happening is that 
we can now just scale up the microelectronics and it works great on 4 inch. You don't even have to have any caution. You just throw caution to the wind and just run it, no problems. Now, if you look at the performance of 4 inch, the performance is way closer to 3 inch than it is 5 inch. So it would actually make more sense to run microelectronics on a 4 inch versus full blown 5 inch electronics on a 4 inch. You'd save some weight, save some space. Everything comes a little bit easier. Everything's lower load. And so you don't really have as much danger in running those microelectronics. So yeah, that's basically where I'm saying things, things may be going. Now, I don't think, I don't know if four inch is really gonna become all the rage. I don't know if it's gonna gain a lot of traction. And in my opinion, I think that the DJI unit, it just, the Vista unit specifically, it just fits four inch so much nicer than three inch that I think that four inch is just a much better size for it. And that's because you can squeeze it into a three inch no problem. It's just that you're either gonna have to stack a bunch of boards up and you're gonna have your battery way up high in the air or you're gonna have it slung underneath the frame. Neither one of which I'm really a big fan of unless I'm going super ultra light and I really need to keep that CG really tight. So if you just pull it out to a four inch or just lengthen the body, you end up getting a body that's as big as a four inch but you're only gonna put three inch props on it. So it's for these reasons why I feel like four inch just makes more sense for the Cadex Vista unit if you're looking for really good performance. And thankfully, uh, it does fit really nicely in a four inch. Now this is a prototype frame I said, it is not gonna be coming out. There's another one that I'm working on. I've gone through about 30 designs of this four inch. It, it turns out four inch is a surprisingly difficult size to design for because you want it to be strong, but you need it to be light and you kind of got to mix everything from five inch, three inch all together. And, get something that sort of somewhat meets your expectations or is the build that you want and performs the way that you want. It's, it's actually a very touchy size to work with if you're looking for performance. Anything will work, but if you're looking for performance and you want it to perform a certain way, it's really a challenge to get it to work really, really well. And so thanks for GemFan for making this prop. I'm going to stop there. I've talked about so much things already. Um, ask any questions you like in comments below, wherever you like. There's a number of platforms that are gonna be coming out very soon. And as you can see here, this is a four inch that has this mounting platform on top. And this is a mounting platform that I'm gonna be using across a couple of frames, a uh, cinematic five inch, the four inch, and the uh, Cinewhoop. All three are designed for Cadex or Vista. And all three are designed to have the same kind of camera mounts move across all of them and have them be really easy to swap. Anyways, floss your teeth, stay safe. And uh, I'll see you later. Bye.